Hey guys, how everybody doing? Welcome back to Biblio Fitness. So today I wanted to go ahead and do the last day of my split, um, which is legs. I finally got to uh, do legs now. <laughs> uh, I split my leg days into quads and hamstrings. I feel like those that like doing it that way is a much more effective effective style of training legs because if you do quads and hamstrings all in one day um one side one part is gonna suffer um one part is gonna suffer and it's gonna definitely lag behind because let's say you do a full leg day and you have like three quad exercises and three hamstrings exercises by the time you're done with those quad exercises and you move on to hamstrings you're gonna be exhausted doesn't matter how much pre-workout you did or if you have your intro workout or all the shit, it, it, it just takes a toll on you. And you are not going to be able to, you know, exert the same amount of, of, of energy and, um, and force as if you were still fresh, obviously. So that's why I've split them up. Hamstring days is pretty fucking boring. There's a bunch of different hamstring curls but and RDLs. But that's, you know, hamstrings don't really have a whole lot of room for maneuvering in terms of what you could do. So that's what I've been doing. Like my legs B is my hamstring day. My legs one is my quad day. And that's really helped out a lot because my hamstrings were really, were starting to fall behind. I started noticing that at the beginning of this year, but they've definitely started to catch up. And um, like who wants, who wants big ass quads, but no hamstrings. It's like being the opposite of a fucking chick nowadays. All they have is, hamstrings and ass and and then and that, that's all they get you know um you know we're trying to have a complete physique so it has to happen uh but i'm already on day two of my deload um it feels uh i'm already uh, it feels good to be able to re relax and rest for a bit um i know i've said this before um but i can't really wait i can't wait to go back to the gym but at the same time, I'm going to take full advantage of the time that I've, you know, the break that I've given. Um, catch up on some sleep. Get my sleep scheduling back uh, because it's pretty grueling, the, the work schedule that I place myself in. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, you have to do what you have to do, right? And you are you got me fucked up. You think I'm going to go to the gym after work. It's not going to happen. I leave work at 4. And by the time I get to the gym, it'd be prime time. And I'm not going to pay $46 a month to be stuck doing working out during prime time hours. So I may dig. Uh, so that's why I got the time I do. I'm going to keep doing the push-pull legs um, for a very long time, probably, as long as I can. The workouts do take a little while, but um, I enjoy them. You know, I enjoy being at the gym, and if an excuse for me to stay longer at the gym, then so be it. Um, I just love training hard and working out. Um, in regards to legs, I've never really had an issue with growing legs. Um, they seem to respond extremely well to low volume, high intensity training, and you know, progressive low, pro progressive overload and stuff like that. I don't really stall on legs like maybe i'll stall on an exercise like once or twice maybe like on an isolation movement but it's been pretty kind it's been pretty steady climbing like you know maybe a rep or two a week but then i'll jump up and do another and then i'll just do like another rep or two and then jump up and uh like rep or two improvement is what i mean not nah, just one or two reps i'm not a fucking power lifter so legs have never been an issue i really do enjoy legs um, I really had been focusing on this here. It's like not just learning the principles of progressive overload, but also really getting that mind muscle connection, really making sure that the muscle that you're supposedly targeting is the one that's working. And there's nothing, there's no better feeling in the world than lighting your quads on fire through exercise. You know, it, it, it hurts so goddamn much, but it feels so good afterwards. It hurts. It's pumped. You you know I take salt with my pre workout and also you know my t I take ten grams of creatine as well. So I'm pretty sure that added stuff has a lot to do with that you know that muscle contraction, that ability to contract the muscle, and my quad just balloon. Um, I wish my legs were that big all the time, but one day they will be. 
Um, but I do highly suggest people to take your salt and and, and your uh, creatine. It's going to help out a lot. It's going to help out with saturation of the muscle. It's going to help out with the pump and the volumization and all that other good shit. Things that I'm not quali qualified enough to elaborate on any further. These, uh, those are great tools to have. It's like, you know, um, some people don't like to take pre-workout and stuff like that, which I don't really get. Um, I like pre-workout. Um, I can't do a workout without caffeine. You know, I wake up at one in the morning to go to the gym. You gotta be fucked up. If you think I'm gonna have the cognitive ability, like the in in endogenously, uh, only endogenously to be able to conduct a fucking two and a half hour workout at that time. Uh, we got me fucked up. I need my caffeine. I need my, my, my stimulants. And I love pre-workout. The only problem is being able to sleep later on that night. But it is what it is. So about to start this day. I know it's a quick video. It is a leg day. There's nothing really to go on. You know, my legs be, like I said, my legs one is where I really focusing on quads. So I first start with a standing, with a standing uh, hamstring. Give me one second. I don't know why, but my, my car. Right. So, my apologies for the technical difficulties. So, yeah, I do a standing hamstrings, and then I move on to pendulum squats, which is heavy. I do heavy, 5 to 9 on my top set, and then 10 to 12 on my back offset. Um, heavy as fuck. I love the pendulum squat. Uh, you can go all the way down. Um, and it just lights you the fuck up. And then for my and then for my second exercise, I do a Smith. I do a leg press, but uh, 15 to 20 reps. I feel like the higher rep range on the leg press really does work. And I'm still climbing. You know, it's a high rep. It's 15 to 20 reps. But I make. But those 15 to 20 reps is like where you're trying to fail at. And obviously more if you're trying to move up in weight. But I'm and like just because it's high volume, it's a high volume set, doesn't make it any more difficult. Like you can still go all out. Obviously, you just can't go have twenty of these goddamn different sort of sets where you do high volume and you train till failure. I only have two of those for my leg press, and I just feel like leg press with like lower low, like a higher load, like lower volume. I mean lower reps. I guess um, it, it doesn't really do much and if anything it's just hurting the knees more than anything so um high volume leg press to me is really good um it lights me the fuck up um i really do a great i do get a great contraction from the leg press machine that we have at our gym and then i do a single leg leg press which is basically a hip press but it's unilateral you could do one at a time that shit lights you up because you can have your knees all the way back here and just really concentrate on pushing and slowly like I, I like i really do imagine myself slowly and like the, the quads of my legs slowly stretching while i'm bringing my legs back so i could really just stay focused on the muscle that's working and aside for after the single leg press i do, I do go why am i even guessing when i have the damn thing Oh, and then the and then leg extensions, and then I move on to the, my hamstring portion, which is seated hamstrings, abductors, and Bulgarian split squats. Now those suck ass, but they feel really good. And same thing with Bulgarian split squats. I do high reps. I'm not gonna do low volume, like low, low like a very high load exposure to Bulgarian split squats, especially since I'm at the very end of my workout. I'm really exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm not gonna be be able to maintain as much stability, especially with heavy weights in my hands. So it just makes more sense to do a little bit more higher rep range. For that, I do two sets of 15 or 20 reps. It lights up my quads and my ass on fire. So it's good. It's a great overall leg finisher. You know, get some hamstrings, some glutes, and some quads thrown in there. Um, it's not gonna hurt. So that's what I do. I don't do any of the RDLs or STLs on my leg day, except my legs B, which is I do my RDL, my barbell RDL. Um, it just makes sense that day because it is going to light up my hamstrings and my glutes. Like, yes, it's going to work my spinal rectors, but that's low key what I want anyways, because I have great genetics for spinal rectors. I just want to get freakier. So RDLs on, leg, on legs B, which is my hamstring day, makes more sense. 
like I said, it's an RDL. Um, I can't wait to train again, man. I'm already torturing myself watching workout videos. Um, but the itch is still not there. Um, it's definitely still not there. I still feel quite exhausted. I, st I definitely know I'm still overly trained and overly fatigued. So I can't wait to get more, like feel more and more fresh as the days pass by and the itch to come back so I can go back to the gym like a fucking maniac. So hope you all have a great day. Uh, I'm about to go hit the motherfucking, I'm about to go clock in the work. So. And your boy is starting. You can't read it, sorry. Uh, the Annals of Perry Rome by Tacitus. So I cannot wait. I can't wait. It goes from the year shortly before the death of Augustus to the death of Nero in AD 68. Uh, with clarity and vividity, a vivid intensity, Tacitus describes the reign of terror under the corrupt Tiberius, the great fire of Rome during the time of Nero, and the wars, poisoning, scandals, conspiracies, and murders that were part of imperial life. Uh, this is obviously one of the great classics of Roman history. I do also want to get the histories, which is the year of the four emperors after the death of Nero in 68 AD, which is basically a continuation. But I got this one because it was basically considered a the, like it is considered the masterpiece of Tacitus. And I also am going to read afterwards the 12 Caesars by Suetonius. I purchased the history of my times. I was going to start it, but I forgot that Xenophon is notorious for not being a fucking historian. Um, so now I am at crossroads. Do I read a story of my own times knowing that it's going to be a lot of horse shit and a lot of things are going to be glossed over? It doesn't seem like a worthy investment of my time when I can just get my Roman history out. So, um, I'm just going to read some good old Tacitus. Maybe if I get the fucking urge, I'll read Xenophon, but I forgot that he is so bad. Um, I forgot... That I forgot about that facet before I purchased that book. I could have just finished the Peloponnesian War through other means by Donald Kagan or something, which is probably what I'm going to do. Because I want to read about Socrates' role, um, especially after dem uh, democracy was implanted back after the revolution of the oligarchy. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, can't wait to get this shit started. About to drink me some Celsius uh, and... Uh, get to work and get to some rain as well so hope y'all have a great day and uh i keep forgetting to say this well i keep forgetting because i never say it so please guys don't forget to like share subscribe uh comment if you have any questions if you have any suggestions please feel free to drop them down below like i said if there's any history nerds or any nerds in general i mean especially history nerds like i said I've, i'm always saying this i got a big ass library that i'm trying to expand upon every day so if you got any recommendations please feel free to drop them down below um, and till next time guys, peace.